Welcome to Venture TV. My guest today is Zhang Li. Zhang, you are the CEO of Hanson Robotics. That's correct. Which is a company that produces like really, really realistic looking robots. Human robots, that's so, their specialty. Yes, so you'll see them right now and it's, it's just amazing. They have really, really accurate facial expressions. They look like a human and they show us how the future will probably look like when it comes to robotics and, and human-like robotics. But the big question is, why do we need such stuff? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. And, you know, I hope uh, different people have different answers and different people want different answers. Uh, we're human. We're the customer. And whether the good Lord created us this way or we've evolved this way, there is intrinsic value and there is a lot of importance in this human interface, mm -hmm. right? Speaking right now, voice is a kilobit business, very, very low in richness. Okay. If I walk up and down like this, that's a megabit signal. Yeah. And it's not bad, better than speaking to you at 64 kilobit. Uh -huh. But your face is generating gigabits of data. And because, of, because of all the small movements of like all the, the micro expressions, right? Okay. And your brain, the back of your brain operates like a GPU, a hardwired graphics processor that is able to seamlessly in real time absorb, analyze, and contextualize everything going on in your face in terms of should I feel, should I be happier about talking to Andre or less happy? Yeah. Should I be worried or should I be excited? Right now, technology doesn't take advantage of this. Right now, we know as human beings, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. That's the way we work. We also know this is one of the reasons why autistic children, for example, can never look at you in the face. Their GPU doesn't work that way. And so all of this data is overwhelming their senses because they're trying to process in software. So we know the human interface requires a human interface. We know there's a richness and a legitimacy and something that makes us tick, mm -hmm. that makes everything that we know, technology, knowledge, services, better when it's put in a human context. Okay. And that's what we're about. So use cases could be medical uh, purposes, like you, you let the robot talk to uh, people with Alzheimer's. Or, Alzheimer's, or, elder care, life yeah. companionship, yeah. Uh, autism therapy for, you know, social training for autistic children. Uh, imagine a nurse's assistant that does rounds and uses standard technology like facial recognition, mm -hmm. your customer data in the cloud to make sure that Andre is in the right hospital, is in the right bed, making, taking medicine, and checking on you every 15 minutes, which never happens in a hospital, yeah. to make sure that your temperature is not elevated, that you're not coughing, and that I'm going to make sure that I see you and say hello and you say hi back so I can analyze your voice to make sure that, again, you're not delusional, you're not showing discomfort. That level of care would be wonderful for us because that's what we want for ourselves and our loved ones. Simply not possible and not affordable. Imagine being able to deliver these things for 90 to 95% less, 10 times more effective, one-tenth of the price. We need, because we are human, we need these sort of services delivered to us in a human way. But a lot of these tough jobs, imagine if you're a life companion for the elderly, you're gonna sit there, you know, hoping that I'm going to catch that one time you need my help. 99% yeah. of the time, everything's fine. I'm just watching you like a guard. It's unbelievably expensive and terribly inefficient. And it's unlikely that the human will be able to catch the patient or the client during that one second that they need her. Okay. A robot has infinite patience, has caring, can be monitored by a human being and can be controlled by a human being and will listen to you say that story, or your father say that crazy story 200 times a day and laugh every time like it was the first time. Mm -hmm. But it'll also remember every time you've said it so that if you change a word or you start slurring kinder, mm -hmm. I know that that's possibly because you've just had a small stroke. I know I can immediately send that recording to the doctor and to your daughter to make sure that someone looks and checks and follows up to make sure you're okay. Wow, pretty amazing. Let's say I can detect your blood pressure and your heartbeat and you're an early stage Alzheimer's patient. I can detect quicker than you that you're having an episode. You've just forgotten who you are. And based on what the doctor wants me to do, I can calm you down, videotape and record and make sure that the doctor comes and sees you. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, it totally is. And like, 
the, the medical things that you can that you can deal with pretty cool and and so much more yeah just a lot cheaper and and uh, just allows you to take a lot better care of people and then there are also the yeah things that are a lot simpler like customer care customer you have in, in your store like yeah Absolutely. customer customer service in your store you have robots Bacara and dealers and casinos Bacara <laughs> dealers and casinos true true yeah and um and you, you you just put a robot there and then somewhere in a so-called call center somewhere in, in whatever let's put it to india or something yeah. sits there actually and and treat you treats you like a vip like you are there yeah same database same training mm -hmm. they read a script because the company says when a, when a customer calls and says i'm not happy depending on who the customer is where that person is and what they're unhappy about the call center database says i'm so sorry mrs smith we're so you know we you shouldn't have felt this way and they're given a script to, to respond to this customer so that the customer the company doesn't take the risk that the call center person doesn't take the risk of making the situation worse imagine that the same call center person manning a human robot at a vip check-in desk at the w hotel three o'clock in the morning right fantastic service facially recognizing you saying welcome andre so glad to see you again how's your daughter would you like that moscow meal how about one on the house you're going to feel like a million bucks and it feeds the same database that the call center guy is used to the richness of the data to provide awesome service for a fraction of the cost if you're working at a hotel and you have to run or manage a hotel you have to have three people managing the front desk between 12 and 7. and there's only let's say 20 people checking in yeah. it's going to cost me 50 bucks a check-in and people aren't going to be happy because i'm sleeping i'm not happy and i quit that human robot will make you feel like a million bucks for two bucks. Yeah, true. Everybody's happy. And then the uh, like the the, the possibi possibilities are almost endless. But then almost they are leading you to a more philosophical question: when you when you have so many robots doing stuff, what do you do with the uh, with the humans that are left over? <laughs> what do you think about that? It's a great question. Well. You know, if you look at Japan, for example, you know, Japan is uh, a precursor, a leading indicator of what Germany, you know, for example, may look like 20 years from now. Japan is a very rapidly aging country. And they are so short-staffed, they cannot find enough people to do even the most basic jobs. We are living in an era, you know, Mark Andreessen said something very interesting in an FT article just a couple of days ago. If we don't adopt technology faster, we're not going to be able to have healthcare or Medicare or any of these services because of the shrinking working population. So number one, we are faced with a decrease in working people in the developed countries. Number one. Number two, a lot of these jobs that are really hard, night shift, social therapists for autistic children, life companions, those are jobs people hate to do and there's not enough nurses we know. So we're not taking jobs away. There's no money, money, and there's no money for more nurses. We're actually just making an impossible situation better. Yeah. We're, our robots, in any event, aren't in the business of picking people up or picking crops. You know, those are other things. We're service. We're about human engagement, and you know, ultimately, we know. You know, these are the kinds of things where if you do a better job, you can actually make the workforce more productive. You can encourage people to do. You can encourage societies to invest in their people to do things that matter going forward, not backward. Healthcare is a legacy issue. Interesting. I mean, amazing things to come. You are part of it. I wish you <laughs> all the best, and I'm, I'm pretty you, pretty excited what will come because, like, as you've seen, there are amazing things and and already 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 here yet. So there will probably be a lot more in the next five years. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Andre. Thank you, guys. See you later. Cheers.